Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how you can generate multiple reports from just one pivot table. Here's the scenario. Let's imagine in this scenario that you're the national sales manager and your vice president has asked you to prepare a report to show the progress that each territory manager has made towards reaching their quota. We're going to have our national sales meeting, so each of these territory managers is going to be invited to attend. So the IT department has given you this raw data and now you're going to create a pivot table. So go to the insert tab on the ribbon and and choose a pivot table. We'll take all the defaults to begin creating our pivot table on a separate worksheet. Now in this case we're going to select each of the four fields. So when we check territory because it's a text field it automatically gets added into the row labels drop area. Sales rep is also a text field so that's now added in as a second field in the row. In other words the inner row. When we select a numeric field, such as quota or sales, they go automatically into the values drop area and they're subtotaled using the sum function. Now, we look at this for a minute and we say, you know, I really need another field in there. I really need to see what percentage of the quota has been reached. So rather than going back to the source data and adding in that calculation, adding in another field, and then going back and starting your pivot table from scratch, no, you don't have to do that. You can create what's called a calculated field in a pivot table. So select one numeric uh, cell, and then over here on pivot table tools, what we want to do is we want to use the drop down for formulas to create a calculated field and it's going to be a formula so let's first give it a label let's call it PCT of quota in other words we know that it's going to be percentage of quota reached now how do we create the formula all formulas you know begin with the equal sign but this time it's going to be a calculation of field so it's going to be year-to-date sales and by double clicking Excel adds in a single quotation mark to surround that divide it by the quota. Now let's click OK and there is our new calculated field. It's been added into the field list and it's put onto the pivot table. Well we notice that we have, of course have to change the formatting here. It's not currency. We need to change that to percentage. So let's right mouse click and we choose value field settings and let's change the numeric format for that, not as one of the customs, but we want to make it a percentage. So it's going to be a percentage with zero decimal places. Now, before we click OK, that's a long word and it's kind of misleading. It's not the sum of the percentage of quota, it's the percentage of quota. Now, notice over here that percentage of quota has been added into our field list. So in order to have this in our pivot table without getting an error message, we have to trick Excel by adding a space after that name that we've now customized. Click OK and there you go. So now we can see the percentage of uh, quota that each sales rep has, has reached. Now we might want to go through and change the name and the format for these other two calculated field or these other two uh, fields that use sum uh, in the pivot table. So what we'll do is we'll change the numeric format to currency with zero decimal places and we'll do the same changing the name to get rid of some of year-to-date sales but make sure that we add a space after that and now we'll do the same thing for the sum of quota we want to get rid of the sum of part of the label so right mouse click value field settings we want to change the number to be currency zero decimal places and now when we click OK, we come over here and we remove the sum of and make sure that we have a space bar, space after that. Click OK. There you go. So now we take it in to the vice president and say, well, that's fine, but you know, when they come in, I want uh, the regional managers to be able to just focus on their results. So what we can do is we can take advantage of the report filter. So in this case, we'll move the territory from a row label. We want to move it into the report filter. So now this is going to be exactly what the vice president wanted. So when the manager from the Mid-Atlantic region comes in, 
interactively we can show just the results when another manager comes in for example the west coast comes in well we can show the results for that so now we demonstrate this to the vp of sales he said well that's fine but before the meeting i want to be able to circulate a report i want to be able to give the west coast territory manager this report i also want to give this to the vp of finance and the vp of marketing now you're thinking oh gosh i'm going to have to go through create these filters and then copy and paste the report no you don't that's the beauty of what I'm going to demonstrate next. So let's restore this pivot table. And since we have one of the fields territory in the report filter, this is how we can generate multiple reports from just one pivot table. What we'll do is we'll return to pivot table tools options. Come over here into the pivot table group. Don't select options, select the drop down arrow next to options. And from the menu, we want to say show the report filter pages. So we only have one field up there. Now watch down here. Watch how multiple worksheets are going to be created when I click OK. Click OK. <laughs> there you go. It's incredible. Great Plains, Gulf Coast, Mid-Atlantic, Midwest. So what you thought was going to be a nightmare turns out to be something that's very, very easy. Now let's uh, rename the sheet over here. We'll call it the uh, pivot table. Now, yesterday I was training a client, and she said, that's exactly what my manager wants, but the manager also wants me to be able to take these individual reports and show them on the same uh, page or the same worksheet as the original pivot table. Can I do that? Yes, you can. So over here, let's come over to the West Coast uh, worksheet. And what I want to do is I want to select the entire pivot table. One way to do that is come up to Pivot Table Tools Options, and we want to select the entire pivot table. Next, we want to copy it. So I'm going to come over here and say Copy, come back to the pivot table, and now what I want to do is I want to paste it over there. And I'll take another one of the reports. I'll take Southwest. Once again, I want to select the entire pivot table. I want to copy it. This time I'll use Control C as the keyboard shortcut to copy the pivot table. Come back over here, select where I want to have it placed, right mouse click and say paste. Now these are actual real live pivot tables. Now as we're going through we might discover that we have um, one of the numbers is wrong. The actual year-to-date sales let's say for Albert are, are different than that. So we come back to our original data source and I will sort this in ascending order. So over here I want to choose to sort this in ascending order. One way to do that is the data tab and the ribbon and choose this in out. Uh, okay so over here I want to change this to 50,000 so he's closer to reaching his quota and now when I come back to the pivot table pay attention over here what I want to do is I want to refresh the data so I'll go over here to pivot table tools options and I want to refresh refresh all so you see the 50,000 is changed here the 50,000 is changed here so this is a way that we can generate all of those multiple reports from just one pivot table I also showed you how to add in a calculated field change the formatting and change the label so that's typical of the re, uh, of the tips that I offer on my video the 50 best tips for Excel 2007 and I'll see you in the next lesson